joining hi cynthia hi hi marie thank you for joining Milix, welcome to the show uh, washington thank you i see you all thank you i want you guys to enjoy that music with me and um, while we're enjoying the music that's tina very new she's one of my favorite cameroonian musicians right now uh has so the song i'm listening to and dancing to his musica so please share 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 let's just get a few more people for now i see only about 10 so just share and just give me about two or three minutes and then we will get on with the show thank you so much oh they're joining in hi Bessem. hi big steve Ball. thank you guys for joining hi 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 so listen to i'll leave you with tina while we continue to share please do share it goes a long way share to your platform so we get other people to come and sharing this really important conversation we're going to have today around autism thank you very very much <laughs> When I'm full of when I want so I like music and I'll pick me as well Musica Musica Womo Pressure Musica Musica Womo Pressure Welcome, welcome to the show Please share, I'm just waiting on a few more people to join now So if you can please share on your networks Thank you very much, thank you Welcome George, we're starting in about a minute and you're listening to Tina very new, um, and her song is titled Musica. So enjoy with me. Okay. 
Okay, great. Thank you all. I think we're just going to start now. We have a good number of you. Welcome. Welcome to the Woman Experience with Goretti. I'm so glad that you guys, as always, you, I'm sure you guys are one of the best guests because you're always on time. Eight o'clock at the dot, people just start popping in and I'm always so chuffed and so, so pleased with that. So thank you so much for that honor because um, I'm learning because in my personal life, I am lastminute.com. But I think you guys are teaching me to, teaching me to be on time because <laughs> I'm always late, <laughs> but that's going to change. I've learned so much on this show. So thank you for that. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, welcome to the woman experience. I'm seeing a few people who are very new to the show. So what we do here every Wednesdays and Fridays at 8 PM is we, we try to create a community where a judgment free community where we, we, sh we share, through experiences. So it's a knowledge sharing via experiences, judgment-free community. So you're very welcome here. And, and we, what we do is if we don't have professionals on our platform, what we do is we always try and leave the resources on our Facebook page, The Woman Experience, for people to go back and, and use at their, at their own on their own time. So we thank you for being here with us. And as I always say, so I'm the host, and then we have our main guest who's talking about a particular topic to us, and then you are our third guest, you who is watching. So we need your voice. Your voice is your power. Your experience is knowledge. Your experience, whether good or bad, your story, whether good or bad, it's power, it's knowledge, and we invite you to share it with us. It is so important on this platform. So just as the thoughts are coming, just leave them in the comments, and I'm going to be reading them out as I as, um, as I talk to the guests. So thank you guys so much for being here. I mean, um, I'm not, I'm not going to start this show without acknowledging the tragedy that befell our community, our wider Cameroonian community, the murder suicide that took place in, in Ohio um, on Sunday, on a day that a lot of us were just chilling with our families. Some, some families were just two lives with two lives were lost and a whole community was devastated. And I think that there, that that really is just a symptom of a bigger cry. And I just want to thank a lot of you are watching, those of you who answered the call when I asked, because we, we really need to address mental health in our community. It is, it is, again, one of those taboo things. Since Sunday, I've been having conversations and con discussions and and arguments sometimes on this particular case. And it just, it really made me see the need for us to have the conversation. So I'm throwing it out to you out there. If you are a mental health professional, if you're in that field, I would, we are working on a four part series on a couple of really important topics. So if you wanna be a part of that, if you think that you, are, you have enough knowledge on that, that you can share with us and that the wider Cameroonian community would benefit from that. I beg of you, inbox me. Let us help each other. Let us help the community in the, in the best way we can in, the, in our own little way. So thank you so much. And my condolences to the family of the, the families of the bereaved. And I just really hope that the children can survive and move on from this and have a happy and healthy life in the future. So our guest of today is she's she's not just um, an advocate, a, an autism advocate. She's a mom. She's a mom to a beautiful, beautiful boy who lives with autism, and she does amazing things for autism in the community. Honestly, I think I reached out to her. I first learned about her when I saw her post about this with her beautiful son, their interactions on social media. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is a young, beautiful girl. Knowing the taboo and the stigmatization of, of around autism, I, I just kept watching her and just watching all her moves, watching all the oddities that she's talking about and how she continues to advocate regardless of, of what society thinks she continued to advocate for autism and it just really warmed my heart and i reached out to her and i slowly started building a friendship and oh my gosh she got, she has my admiration utmost admiration for the work she does for her grace in the way she carries herself and for everything and i'm so 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 honored today to have 
very beautiful Clarice on the show. Hi, good Hi. evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me today. <laughs> the pleasure is mine, honestly. Honestly, the pleasure is mine. I am so thankful for all you do for autism to raise awareness of, for autism and not just that, your humanitarian work, because you do a lot um, outside of just autism. And honestly, it is something very remarkable to me. And I just really, if you're in the comments and you don't know Clarice, her Facebook name is Asim Beng. And if you go there, you will see the links to all the things that she, all her, her different activities are different. I'm not going to call them charitable, her different humanitarian activities. Just get to know Clarice. You will be amazed. There are some people in our community like us who are doing amazing things. So I'm not going to talk too much. Thank you so much. It is my honor to have you on the show, Clarice. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And your guests are watching. So if you want to say hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, and thank you so much for honoring this invite today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm really, really happy being here today. It's a learning process, like Goretti said. Yeah. So I'm still learning. I'm a parent of an autistic child. And along the, the, the journey, we learn every day because as they grow, there are changes. Same as any parent with any child without autism, we, we, we learn along the, along the journey. So mm -hmm. new things come up, they get to adulthood, teenage, teenager, adulthood. So things change and we learn, we continue learning and we continue using our experiences to help them. It's the same thing with a child that is autistic. Do you know, I never really know how to, so because I have, like I told you, I know um, a few friends with autistic children and I never want to say the children are autistic children I always say the children live with aut autism like I don't know if if it's a bit it's stigma it's a stigma to call them autistic children I don't know so please try and correct me today <laughs> there is there there's been a controversy at some point at how some people don't want to be called autistic yeah Right, and some do not want to 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 say I have autism. I, there's one uh, autistic guy. He's uh, um, I think Jamie Jamie Knight and mm -hmm. Lion. So he he is autistic, but he he said that he doesn't want to say that he has autism mm -hmm. because he says he has autism is something which he owns. If you say you have something, something that you own. Exactly. He doesn't own autism, so he's living with autism or he's autistic. So it varies from one person to another. What I've discovered, especially with uh, us in Africa or in Cameroon, is we, we prefer, sometimes we individuals dodge away from the real words, from using the real words. Um, they, they like to say somebody who is differently abled. <laughs> 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 and, and things like, so, so I, I, I think it just boils down to individuals with what you, you feel comfortable mm -hmm. in. Because some, some will relate that you, you cannot say somebody is autistic because you can't say somebody with epilepsy is epileptic. Oh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I get it now. But, but it's good. It's good uh, saying that somebody living with, with oh. autism or a child with autism or an adult with with autism yeah so yeah. It, i i actually had to learn some of the some of the, the the vocabularies or some of the language when i did my postgraduate in autism and asperger so i had to like change a few things around and the, i i discovered that over the years there were things strategies which i was actually using but i didn't really know which names to put to so no. so i actually yeah so i actually moved from like from from practicals to theory instead of the other way around. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. I mean, see, this is why I say mothers are amazing because you you had you had a problem and you were like, I will go to the ends of the world. I'm sure. Yes. To find a solution to this problem, and mm -hmm. so you, that that's amazing. Honestly, I need to commend you for that. Yeah, one of the things which every autism parent has to do is to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. is to have a better understanding of what that condition is, what autism is, 
how it affects your child because no two individuals with autism are the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, there's a saying that once you've met one autistic individual, you've met just that one autistic individual because it affects them differently. So, mm -hmm. so it's very necessary for any parent who has an autistic child to really put down yourself at some point and learn exactly what it is, what you generally about what autism is, then you narrow it down to how it affects your child and mm -hmm. what strategies you can use now to help, help your child or manage the condition. Yeah. yeah, Judy says special needs is the phrase more widely used in my community. Yes, special needs it is, uh, especially if they, they have odd, if they are autistic with other co occurring conditions mm -hmm. like like learning, uh, learning disabilities, learning difficulties, or if, even um, cerebral palsy. Yeah, you, you put it under the umbrella of learning of special needs. So before we even to go further into autism, what is autism, sister? Autism, Aut autism. I would like. I usually like to say autism is an invisible, long-term developmental disability, developmental disability or developmental condition mm -hmm. that affects it affects individuals differently. Mm -hmm. It affects the way an individual will communicate with another person. It yeah. affects the way the person behaves generally. It mm -hmm. affects the way the person perceives the environment or the world in which he is in. And it also affects the way an individual processes uh, information or sensory. Some individuals with autistic, they do have a lot of sensory processing issues, maybe with fabric, the noises, sounds, or... Mm -hmm or mm -hmm. smell. Have you seen a child who just suddenly go like that when they are in? Yeah. yeah. If you are may, maybe in a party and there's loud music, you see a child doing like that often. Uh, it may be autism, it may not be, but most often autistic individuals, they do not like very loud sounds. So like I said, it, it's an invisible long-term developmental condition. Invisible because Autism is not like um, you see a child who is blind or you see someone who is on a wheelchair or or having a, a walking stick. Mm -hmm. No, you look at an autistic, an autistic child, he or she looks normal. Let me use the word normal. Normal in this case, I mean, looks physically okay. Yeah. You may not know that they have a disability until you start interacting with them. Those who are talking will talk very well and very fluently. And how the autism affects those who speak very fluently is that they, they may repeat, they have the tendency of repeating what, it, what is being said to them. If you ask, if I'm autistic, you ask me, what is your name? I'll say, what is your name? So they repeat everything and it is called echolalia. So you also have those who communicate very well and you also have those who do not communicate at all. When, when I say communicate, I mean verbal. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I mean verbal talking. Those who can talk and, and those who who cannot who cannot talk. Yeah. So sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Autism. I want to ask our audience: Who, who, uh, growing up in Cameroon, can the, does is there anyone in the audience who ever knew an autistic child? Because I don't think I did. What, what, Clarice, did you ever know an autistic child while, while you were growing up in Cameroon? Um, I didn't know he he's, he was autistic until I learned about autism. And then it, it's someone very close to, to the family. He's 34 now. Yes, so, so it was later on. So is it, is it, is it genetic? Is it a genetic condition? Um, I, I won't really say. Be, that is, it's genetic, but in some families, I've, I've seen cases where a mom is autistic and the children are autistic. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I haven't really seen a lot of research that, that says, but some schools, there are some schools that believe that autism is genetic and there are some who do not believe that it, it is, it is genetic. Oh, yeah. Like me, I'm a conspiracy yeah. theory. I'm a conspiracy theorist when it comes to <laughs> honestly. Uh -huh. I believe that vaccines, especially in the UK, the MMR vaccine. I mean, I shouldn't be peddling that, but 
I'm a conspiracy when it comes to that because I know somebody whose child or two actually whose children before they took the MMR vaccine and after that mm -hmm. um, there was such a difference. Although, please don't come. To, uh, vaccines are very important. There's a reason why they are vaccines. There are, uh, it's very important for our children to have vaccines. So I'm not I'm not against vaccines, but I'm just saying that I think there's a correlation there somewhere between that particular MMR vaccine that the children get around 18 months and, yeah. and yeah. Um, those whose whose children um like there's another form of autism which is regressive autism where a, a child starts developing normally mm -hmm. achieving the milestones mm -hmm. at the at the right age mm -hmm. and then at some point it just stop if they had started talking they stop talking yeah. and they start regressing so that's regressive autism um on unfortunately i i won't really want to say no or, or say yes that um, autism is caused by can be caused by a vaccine because mm -hmm. those, the, the parents who say their children is their, their children are autistic because of a vaccine they obviously have reasons why they are saying so they obviously know how the child was developing before mm -hmm. having their vaccine and how it and how they have regressed after having the vaccine obviously when there's a problem we mm -hmm. have to for the source of that problem, right? And I, I, I don't want to be mean. Most often, when there's a problem, we have to look for something to put to blame that that problem on. But um, parents who have said their children were okay, then they be, they became um, abnormal, I should say, or they regressed after having the MMR vaccine. I guess they would have actually done uh, uh, studied their children very well. Yeah, before saying that they've, they've definitely changed, but in my case, I won't say uh, he, my son is autistic because of a vaccine. Because no. one of the, if though it, it is said that there are no major causes of autism, but there are risk factors, and mm -hmm. and risk factors. One of the risk factors is a, a a child that has been born extremely premature or a child with very low birth weight. Then in, in also so, some cases, there are ch children who have a red, red syndrome or Down syndrome. They are at risk mm -hmm. of, of developing uh, autistic spectrum disorder mm -hmm. in the long run. Then you also have a, as a risk factor, uh, siblings who have an autistic sibling. They are also at risk of uh, being autistic. Well, so if... If you look at things like that, you you may actually uh, lean towards the fact that autism may be caused, may be genetic. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Although I don't know why why the the research on that is not is readily available because I tried to score the internet and just to find and I really couldn't find. Although before before we even delve further into this, mm -hmm. we shared some inf information with you because. I couldn't exactly find the statistics on how many African ch children of uh, black and minority ethnic groups are, are have are living with autism. Yeah. I couldn't exactly find the statistics, but I think that's one of the reasons why I asked the question that people growing up in Cameroon, just think, think back all of us, think back in Cameroon, do you think you knew anyone with autism? I saw a few children with Down syndrome, but not necessarily autism. Yeah. But you shared some statistics with me, which mm -hmm. says that, um, look at that. So the 55% yeah. is that is that Bangladeshi? Yeah, it looks like the 55% the is more of Asian. Asians. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. um, autism is very prominent in the, within the Asian. Yeah. And so, but just, so uh, the Cameroon, uh, sorry, not Cameroon, the black, black African one looks like about 3%. Mm -hmm. I I wonder. I don't know if the, the there is enough if the statistics for the statistics for the, the Africans or, or for the blacks if the statistics are accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and just for more information, somebody actually mentioned to me that the, the there's a high rate of autistic individuals in the Asian communities because of the intermarriages. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've heard of that, but someone who is in who is in Bahrain and she mm -hmm. works in, in a special needs school, she actually mentioned that to me. But I don't know. I 
if those statistics oh, no. so, then it may it may be yeah I mean, uh -huh. sorry because the, i mean the statistics is very clear mm -hmm. so there, should, there must be a, a, a link the most yeah. there, there should be i mean any right thinking person would be able to see that even though the science is still not yet out on that mm -hmm. but you, you know autism um down syndrome all these neurological and, and behavioral conditions that some of our children live with are very very taboo within the uh, within the african community do you agree with me or not yes i agree so so agree yes <laughs> yeah any disability disability in general it, it's, it's, yeah, it's taboo it's a it's a taboo topic it's yeah. something People do not feel comfortable or confident discussing because so, of because of the shame, because of the stigma attached to to this, because of the blames that come alongside these disabilities, alongside autism, alongside um, Down syndrome or any form of disability. Mm -hmm. it, it is either my uncle or my grandma or my neighbor or my somebody did this mm -hmm. to me, and then it's affected my child. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's either witchcraft mm -hmm. or it's something. Well, she she's a young lady. What do you, what what do you expect? Or do you know how many things she must have done in the past with her womb for her child? <laughs> for her child, obviously. <laughs> 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 So things like that, which um, many people, once they start saying them over and over, you, the parent, you may start believing because you look around, you look into yourself. You, you don't actually know what you did wrong or what happened during that pregnancy. You don't even know whether you ate something that wasn't right. Then at some point, you, you start leaning towards that witchcrafty kind of kind of thinking or maybe somebody took my clothes or something and took it to Baba. Right. Or, yeah. 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 So, so it's when those things are being said, it affects the parents, mm -hmm. which kind of leads to shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, I know there are so many people who kind of blame uh, uh, parents of autistic children that they lock up children in the room, in the houses. In, um, in Cameroon, sorry, in Cameroon, yeah. it is true because I know that um, one of our family, well, one, our neighbors, when I was younger, had an autistic child that literally that child never saw the, the light of day. That child was always locked up in the bedroom. The little girl, I remember very vividly. Mm -hmm. Child with Down syndrome, so Down syndrome, yeah. Yeah, I'm not completely. I'm I'm not for that type of behavior, but at at times you have to look into the parents as well. The struggle how the parent is also struggling mm -hmm. because autism it's a spectrum it affects individuals differently and it it, it varies from um mild severe moderate mild severe etc mm -hmm. you have those who have who are very very hyperactive and some do have very challenging behaviors i i used to work with a girl whereby you have to work whatever thing you do with her you have to do it proactively in order to minimize any challenging behavior so if you know that this is what she needs at this particular time you should just be getting ready to do it at that time because it takes a shorter time to manage her without a behavior without a challenging behavior as compared to when she's already in need, it will take the whole the whole house. So you you also have a, a children who who are a danger to themselves and a danger to the rest of the communities. And because parents are not being trained on how to manage their children, some of them the only thing they can do is to tie them up, is to keep them in the house. Yeah. That may be one of the reasons. Another reason may be the shame. You may be living in a community and you are the only woman, you are the only parents or <laughs> with a child with a disability or with autism and the only child who goes to a special needs school. You kind of feel, you the parent feel a bit isolated because sometimes you don't really have a common conversation with every other parent. Other parents will sit and they, oh, my child can do this, my child does that. Um, 
<laughs> you know how you know how we celebrate milestones when you have two children, especially uh -huh. your new moms. Every milestone is so heavily celebrated. Uh -huh. I mean, the rest of your yeah. life, the whole conversation is around children. So I understand yeah. that. I just want to read some comments because Tessie says something. She says, just with that definition, I think I may be living with some kind of autism because I can't stand noise. It makes my head spin. And you're talking about I want I'm trying to relate that to that wide spectrum because what we found is that the, the spectrum of autism is very high because there are actually some very high functioning people living with autism that you would not know unless you really paid attention yes. so they, those who have asperger syndrome yeah you you will not know they are going to normal uh, mainstream school they yeah. do everything but um i but they, they they do struggle especially when they are in a crowd i i used to know a girl who she she had to graduate, she will not wear her robe because it's just too force, it's just too much on her on her body. So little things like that they will affect them. Some children, how autism affects them are, are the, the labels on their clothes mm -hmm. because they're irritating. Mm -hmm. Some some can just be the type of socks that they have that they'll have to wear or a, a, a particular fabric. Mm -hmm. So all, so autism all affects affects each child differently and you know there are adults okay. that there are individuals who have grown all through their life their lives without knowing that they were autistic until they had a diagnosis at an adult age yep that's for sure i mean knowing what i know about autism now and and, and i think i only heard about autism when i fell bush knowing what i know about autism now is i i can see people within the Cameroonian community grown men and women that I know that this person is autistic. You can yeah. tell. But back yeah. then obviously we just assumed that some people were slow or they too dull as we always yeah. think. Um, mm -hmm. I want yes. to read Janice's comment. Janice says my uncle was autistic with Prada Prada, Prada syndrome. So he eats everything around him. I never understood it till I came into this country. What what's Prada Willie syndrome? Um, I'm not too sure ab about that, but there are autistic children who will eat anything, and yeah, who who they they will just eat anything. There's a condition called um, is it a, a, a parka? Um, when I remember, I'll say it. Do you know that um, you know in Cameroon where pregnant women mm -hmm. eat kalabachok? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it. <laughs> it it has a name or ch ch children eating eating non edible mm -hmm. items. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it, it, yeah, some autistic children do that. They they will just eat anything. Some will actually eat raw food because it, it's sensory. It feels good, and they will just want to keep eating. And there are some. The only thing they can do is to eat. So how? At what age did you diagnose your son with autism and what got you concerned? How do you diagnose autism in a child? Okay, he he was three. I think he was ar around three ish, but because he was born extremely premature, so there has there had always been we had always known that there would be a delay. So mm -hmm. a, a child born at 24 weeks, obviously, with, with, with the problem with his brain will have a developmental delay. Yeah, it, it was already it was already there because he 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 didn't walk at, at the right time that the child would normally start walking or crawling, mm -hmm. and his crawling was the commando kind of crawling. So mm -hmm. we always had an eye on that, but there there was more to it because I watched one movie and some of the things you know you you mentioned that earlier that rocking, yeah. uh, and then not really giving eye eye contact or mm -hmm. biting things, everything, chew, chewing things or switching, putting on and on the lights. You yeah, are being obsessive with certain parts of a toy or being very obsessive with, with uh, certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were some of the things that I, I pictured. I figured out then when we went for a normal um, a six That's month cool. appointment. So mm -hmm. I mentioned to his to his uh, consultant that these are the things I have picked up and I was watching a movie and and I discovered that there's a condition called autism do you think he may also fall under this and mind you the next um, letter 
autism was one of his con one, one of his conditions. So <laughs> that thing that we eat everything. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaker. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Tessie says I only started noticing this recently. I think in the last year, and it gets really bad sometimes. I cannot have both music and TV with the volume up. Tessie. It, it, it could just be old age. <laughs> oh, it, can, it can be anxiety. It, 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 it can be anxiety, or or maybe she's gone through. Had, has she gone through a traumatic experience where she's she she easily gets agitated with uh, uh, so many things going on around her? Yeah, it may be autism. It may not be. It may, it may be other things, or, or her environment may just be too busy for her liking, and she's finding it difficult to concentrate. Oh, you're just getting old, sis. It all hits her at some point. Cynthia <laughs> <laughs> um, says in Cameroon, it's associated to witchcraft or nyongo. If you yeah. have an autistic child and you're poor, it's associated to witchcraft. And if you're rich, it's nyongo. <laughs> no, so it's Cameroon. And Jenny says, and, and this person, Lord's favor, Leke says, even sickle cell anemia is seen like a curse. In Africa, they used to refer to them as Ubanji. Right. Basically, yeah, anything we don't understand is witchcraft. It's witchcraft, yes. Right. Anything we can't really point uh, point a finger to why this person is like this. Yeah. You know where you, you, you know where you'll be put your hand. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny says, when I did one of my trainings on autism, I was told that we all have some threat, <laughs> really, of autism in us. Oh, and yeah. given to us that made me start thinking I too had a treat. <laughs> you know, that, that's what some people say, say that each and every one of us has an uh, autism trait. And hence Father Christmas <laughs> Father Christmas had Father Christmas had autism. That's why he 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 used to line up his his I think his, his the toys or the or, or the gifts he has to give to children. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to pray it away. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I think it's actually something worth for all of us who are watching. I'm learning something new. If we all have a trait of autism, start watching those our friends and family who are who have OCD. That could be something. OC, OCD. Yeah. Well, yes. Obsessive, Obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes. If I know some people who have OCD, like if their hand is there, you do not touch it. No, they wash the hands. I, I think they're doing quite well now during this COVID with hand washing. It's the time. <laughs> the palms may have peeled off already. It's the time. So um, Jenny came back to explain what uh, Prada Wheelie syndrome is. Typical symptoms of Prada include excessive appetite and overeating, which can lead to dangerous weight gain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's also agreeing with you saying all human beings got the spectrum. Really? Wow. Okay. So for your son, you said you say you obviously is because he was born really um, premature, and that's how you were able to. But for somebody who had a normal baby, how do you? What are the symptoms? How can you uh, identify? What What should you call for concern? If in okay. Yeah, I, I actually read um, online today that the child can be diagnosed with autism at any age, which I raised my eyebrows it be, because it, it says autism is a developmental disability. Mm -hmm. So how, how developed will a newborn be for an, an assessment to be done on, on that child? But developmental dis disability or condition in the sense that um, most children who, who, who are autistic the, they can be diagnosed um, just around two years, maybe before two years or ar around that around that age. But there are parents who say, um, like we talked of the regressive autism. Yes, their children were developing normally, achieving their milestones, like having good eye contact. Yeah. And having their first words, you, you call them, they respond to their names immediately, and then mm -hmm. suddenly they stopped. Yeah. Suddenly they regress. They mm -hmm. won't answer the names anymore. They won't look at you when you are talking to them. They won't give that proper eye contact, mm -hmm. like you are talking with the child. They they don't want to interact with the the with their friends or with their peers. So some of the 
signs or the symptoms you can look out for will, will generally be a delay in speech, mm -hmm. yeah, um, obsession with certain certain toys or with certain things, or, or maybe concentrating on certain parts in a toy. Like if it's a toy train, the child may just be uh, busy with the wheels all the time, mm -hmm. or on and off mm -hmm. the, the, the lights. There, there are some, it, it's necessary for parents to also keep this in mind. Some children who start tiptoeing, who start walking by tiptoeing, mm -hmm. that's something for, for a parent to be worried. It may be autism, it may not be, but it's good for a parent to actually raise that up with, with, the, with the GP. But it, usually they say there is a... Um, Correlation. Yeah. Most of the, the children I know who have been diagnosed with, with autism, when they started, like, started walking, they started tiptoeing. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, I think just last year, I met one lady, her, her daughter was really walking on her tiptoes. Then mm -hmm. when I, I was just discussing with her, then she mentioned to me that she's under the, the, the mm -hmm. GP, they're actually doing assessment, in, mm -hmm. as, assessment for, for autism. But usually it's the way the child communicates Either they talk too much or just on and off, or they just say things. Mm -hmm. Some they, they autistic children, autistic individuals, they are very literal. They say it as they see it. So mm -hmm. you won't stand and you tell the child that it's raining cats and dogs outside. Mm -hmm. They will be expecting to see cats and dogs raining, uh, mm -hmm. falling, falling down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to bring um, Pauline's point. She says that for her autistic child, she was blamed for marrying an older man. I heard that growing up as a child, that or as a young girl, that when you marry a man, or if you marry a much older man, you would have children with Down syndrome, or you have children with behavioral issues. I actually did hear that. I I, I remember that very clearly. Yeah, I've also read that one of the risk factors for, for autism is the older parents. But if if you look at it in relation to to, to Down syndrome, because you know if you are, I think it's from 35 or how many years that when you are pregnant that they, 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 they start telling you have to do the, the Down syndrome. So if Down syndrome is a risk factor for autism and and, and they usually look at Down syndrome in terms of, the, the woman's age or, or something, then there may be a relationship, but I don't really know. But older parents, it's um, one of the risk factors for uh, uh, that the child may be autistic. Almost it's more with Down syndrome. More with Down syndrome, yeah. For me, when I had when I was pregnant with my first son, mm -hmm. I was under thirty, and and the Down syndrome test came positive, and the um, yeah so that's that's the first the first one that they do through a scan it's not it is it 12 yeah. weeks so so they, they use the scan to measure the, the length of the baby's yeah. name. so they are not they are not accurate they're not usually accurate and it's it's very risky because when it comes when it comes positive why they say positive it, they're the ratios that yeah. they they compare and sometimes when they say it's positive then they advise you now to do the next one which is the mm -hmm. uh, amniotic fluid yeah, that yeah. They have to pull out, which is very risky because it can actually lead to miscarriage, miscarriage yeah. Yeah. yeah so you have very the, uh, so many uh, individuals or so many ladies who have been who have gone through that and they've been asked because of the initial results that they had so they mm -hmm. had to go through that but I've never accepted to 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 the I, I, I refuse. I personally, for me, for my son, I refuse to do that amniocentesis. What's that amniocentesis yep. test with the pain? Because of all, I'm, I am I am was when you have a phobia for needles. What's that called? <laughs> I'm scared of needles. So that's yeah. why I want to read what some. Um, what I say, some traits could be found in very early years, like crying, silence, or slightly not normal. Yeah, uh, maybe. Uh huh. Yeah, very early years, maybe before before one, before one or before two. Yeah. 
Valmi says there's a great difference between autism and language difficulties. Not all kids with language difficulties are autistic. Exactly. There is, there, there's a massive difference because you have some children who just have a delay in, in speech. Mm -hmm. May receive speech and language therapies, but uh, uh, communication, the way a child communicates, it's, it, it's also one of the, it's also how autism affects, affects the child. And then mm -hmm. you, you have how they communicate. Some who do not speak, they communicate with you by pulling, pushing, crying, and all the like in order to pass on their messages, even the ones who, who hurt themselves. That is still another form of communication because they say every behavior is communication. So she's very correct that not all language difficulties are, uh, not all children with language difficulties are autistic. That's very true. Yeah. I just want to thank all those who are joining us now. Quite a few people are joining us now. Thank you. Welcome to the Woman Experience with Goretti. Yeah. And just, I'm so glad you're here. We're talking to Clarice Anga from Deng who is talking to us. She's a mom with a, a young boy, beautiful boy living with autism. And she's just trying to, which here today, we're trying to re reinforce awareness, you know, and dispel all those myths around autism and yeah, and autism related conditions. So thank you guys so much for joining. I'm going to ask you, uh -huh. What are some of those? So now we know all these very, very obvious signs that that children with autism have. What are some that are not very common? Are there some that are not very common? Because we've been talking about, are there any that are not very common? Like, I don't yeah, know. Like, yeah, like you, you mentioned earlier that the, there are some, especially with, with the adults, um, it, some of them, it's very difficult to, to know, especially those who have Asperger. So how it affects them mostly it's the, the the sensory processing issue. They find it difficult, like uh, some find it difficult dating, like with the adults, because mm -hmm. they won't know how to have a proper conversation. The, uh, one of the guys I once had a show with, he he said he he supports autistic adults and. There is this guy who is autistic. He didn't. He didn't understand why. He he he's, he's seen this girl. He loves her, and he cannot just walk up to her and tell her that I love you, even though this girl is sitting with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So those are some of the difficulties. Or, um, for example, going into a shop. You may not know how it affects them, but they can actually tell you that the way this shop smells, it's affecting me. The noise or everything around is, is affecting them. So, and just the fact that autism is invisible unless you start interacting with the person makes yeah. it makes it difficult. So if you're an adult now who was never diagnosed, but you suspect that I may not be normal like other people. Mm -hmm. If anybody has um, has a response to this, please. Um, what 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 are some of the things that you should ask yourself? Um, some of the um, adults I know this. They some of them said they started questioning themselves, especially if their child has been diagnosed with autism. So they start questioning that, that some of the difficulties I've, I've I've been facing over the years, maybe. It's, it's because of this. There are some, however, who have gone ahead to have a diagnosis and some said, I will just prefer to be the way I have been, but mm -hmm. most prefer to have a diagnosis. And those who have had, they say, I now understand why I have been struggling in the past. Mm -hmm. And I now understand that my life is going to be different from now. I want and to be Okay, sorry, go on, go on, go on. And, and also, you have girls who, girls are very good at, at masking, at camouflaging mm -hmm. their, their, their autistic traits. You, you how, how they do that is they can copy. For example, if an autistic girl looks up to you as her model, she really likes you, she likes the type of things you do, she'll want to copy you, she wants to copy everything that you, that you do so as not to look autistic. I think so, somehow they do it unconsciously, but 
but they do mask, which is one of the reason why you have a, why there's a higher rate, a higher figures in boys being diagnosed with autism than yeah. than girls. I actually erroneously believed that autism affects more African boys because a lot of the the boys, a lot of the children that you see around are boys. Are boys especially those that claim that it was vaccine related are boys and even the statistics in um, some statistics that i read mean it in in america it's okay. mainly boys so i was wondering is this it, it it's is this a disease that affects mainly boys around that age also i also read talking about the late diagnosis in america apparently people of minorities so minorities don't really get access to, to diagnosis and that's also why there is uh, there is there's very little statistics of high functioning adults living uh, with autism yeah um because it, it takes well, normally a long time for autism to be to be diagnosed i i want to guess that sometimes if it's taking too long they just give up but most often with, with the younger ones but most often with, with, with parents with, of younger children, they will insist because obviously they know that there's something not right with their child. So they have to keep pushing and pushing until they, there is a diagnosis. So, so I think maybe some of the, one of the reasons why we, we don't really have enough statistics with, 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 um, with Africans, maybe because we are not really going out there with our children to have an official diagnosis mm -hmm. or, yeah, yeah or maybe yeah I'm, I'm sure pauline is asking is there any cor correlation between autism and stuttering um i i won't i won't really know but stuttering is, is a it's a language it's a, a language difficulty isn't it yes it is i i, I don't know if there's a correlation uh, between between the the two, but if it if you look at it in terms of communication or verbal communication, it may be. Okay. But I haven't I haven't really heard a lot of autistic individuals who 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 are stuttering. I haven't seen lots of them. Either they they talk for England or they do selective mutism or they don't talk at all. So as a mother, you have how old is your son? He's going to be 15 in October. Ah, he's so handsome. Mm -hmm. I, I have a picture, but I, I didn't get the picture of just that. I have a beautiful picture with your son. That's him the, on the left next to his mom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and her beautiful family. So you had, before I ask you my questions, can you tell me what the, is that a Atogu or is it something else? Yes, that's, we, we actually, is the Togo. So, so I, I, I call you. Well, it's the Africans and Northwest. Uh, I know. That What's for, the real pronunciation of it? I think it's Togo. 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 Okay, Togo. <laughs> I call it a Togo. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know, but I've always spelled it as T O G H O. Togo. Okay. Togo. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. But but in my income, we call it Dala, kind of. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but Togo seems to be the general name in in Bamenda. So, mm -hmm. so I, I I wanted to make um, something very unique because I know a, every individual who is autistic is, mm -hmm. is unique in mm -hmm. their own way, special in their own way. And because April is Autism Awareness Month and the 2nd of April is Autism Awareness Day. So that was, I think that was 2018 uh, Autism Awareness Day. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to make something uh, unique, something African, mm -hmm. because at, at times I get frustrated when I see a lot of pictures of autistic individuals who are just white. Yeah. Right. And and I'm like, so there are no autistic uh, black children or, or white. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, most of us, when we see pictures of uh, um, other autistic children, they share, they share quite a lot, they share. But when it comes to our own children, we don't. But we have very yeah. beautiful, handsome, autistic children and out out there. So I wanted to to make something that will be different, mm -hmm. but you will still be able to bring out that message. Mm -hmm. So in so that is the autism reborn. As you see, you know, most awareness 
Yeah. You usually see see that ribbon. So it has it has the colors, the rain the rainbow colors, mm -hmm. and it, yeah. so it actually shows the colorfulness in every family. Oh, an autistic child, and the the, the puzzle, the, the diversity in every autistic individuals. Yeah, that's, that's really thoughtful and very so, very very beautiful. And and it's from this. So th this is the autism fabric. Okay, so yeah. those are puzzles at the back. Yeah, those are puzzles. Uh huh. Okay. And, yeah, and 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 the different the different colors as well. So that one was, was being embroidered. It, it, it was done in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. So uh, she says, are there institutions in Cameroon that help kids with autism? Okay. I've asked about this several times. I know of a school in Akum, but mm -hmm. it seems it has everyone. Mm -hmm. When I say everyone, I mean children with all with different forms of disability. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a training institution to, to, to train uh, teachers who will uh, uh, support autistic individuals. But as an institution to have uh, that name institution, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, institution sounds a little bit like, um, a little bit like a prison. <laughs> but, but I understand, I understand what she means. As of now, I don't know if there's any, but I'm still finding out. But I know there are quite a few charities, a few organizations in Yaoundé, in Douala. Yeah, if you can, and if, if uh, for the audience, if you know anybody that deals with autism, just please let us know so that we put their names under the resources page on the woman, the Goretta experience, so that. Yes. Um, people can look it up again at their own time and use it yeah. for their own purposes. And also, and also with with my uh, fundraiser that I did, I was also asking if there's anyone who knows someone with an autistic child in Bamenda. It, it's a bit. It's been a bit um, difficult to actually have uh, uh, families who have an autistic child with a diagnosis. So, mm -hmm. if there's anyone who knows, please contact me and, and let me know because we are planning to to give out what we had from my fundraiser to support them during this COVID period. Oh, that's, that's really thoughtful. Isabel says, yes, there is one in Douala. We'll get back to you with the full address. Thank you so much, okay. Isabel. If Thank you, you just send it to Clarice, her social her Facebook page name is AC Mbeng, the name on her name tag here. Or you can just send it in, in, into my messenger. She's Thank got my number. We okay. live here. We are neighbors. Oh, great! <laughs> All right, good. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was going. I was asking you, what are some of your fears as a mom with a child that's living with autism? As the child grows older, what are some of your fears? Yes, those are some of the areas. This is one of the areas where you you, you go there carefully. <laughs> you want to reach there, that you are you don't want to reach there, but someday you have to get there. Yeah. If, if you and I sit today and we are discussing about our children, the future, the school, the university, you have a very long list, right? A, a, a long list. You'll be able to tell me that okay, he's going to go to this college, he's going to go to this university. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a parent with a child with, with an autistic child, you get stuck at some point. Especially when you are you, you can't really predict how their development, uh, how the development is going to be in the, the in, in the next year or yeah. in the others yet. So that's one of my fears. I cannot really tell how it's going to look like in the next two, three, four, four years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So at, at times you just we, we just help him as much as possible to be able to be independent to gain his independence and be able to do things on his own. Yeah. But how is the support here in the UK? At least you're lucky or I should say you're lucky you're here in the UK. How is yeah. the support here for autistic children with autism? Yeah, you you do you do have um, support from the social services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they could they, they usually do their assessment. So you could have support for for respite, mm -hmm. maybe 
one night, two nights, depending on your child's difficulties, depending on how the, the, the autism affects your child and how it affects mm -hmm. how it affects you, mm -hmm. the parents, or how it affects the entire family. Because at times, a per the, the parent needs some needs their own their own respite as well, as well as the sibling. They also need. A little bit of break. So, so through that, the, the social services they, they arrange for respite and also support. Sometimes support with support worker over mm -hmm. the over the weekend, maybe one or two hours. Usually, it depends on on the child's needs and yeah. the family's needs as well. It will it will never be enough because at times you really want somebody to 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 support you like 24 hours so you can maybe have sleep for 24 hours if you can but yeah as as of the fears that's one of my fears the future of his education and transitioning to adulthood and being able to whether you, you're not yet sure whether he'll have a job tomorrow whether he'll be able to maintain the job in in the future or not the greatest fear Mm, the greatest fear, most parents with special needs children, autistic children, they wish not to die. Yeah. They wish to live till old age where they'll take care of their child until, yeah, yeah. but it, it's, it's not ours, isn't it? We, we are not the decision maker when it, comes, when it comes to that. But because it's something that's, because death is inevitable, so yeah. you always have, have to make plans, which is why most parents or myself, I, I am so much into this awareness, right? Because awareness is not only about educating people uh, of what autism is. It's also letting them know that this is a young man who, 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 who will someday, you will someday see him in the community and how will you help him? If yeah. you are aware, if you see him and he's approaching, yeah, Definitely. and 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 he's he's approaching you, how will you how will you support support mm -hmm. him? So it's also letting letting people know that he, you you have to be aware. They're letting family members also creating educating family members and also teaching them how they can support the child in your absence. So your younger one, your younger son, he's 10 years old. Mm -hmm. He's had to, how is this, how does, does this affect him? Do you feel yeah. like having an older brother with autism has affected him in any way? Yeah, it, it definitely, it, it's actually affected him because his circle of friends is kind of um, narrowed a, a little bit. He's, I don't know how that happened, but he's grown up with this responsibility, with this in his mind that he's responsible for his brother. So yeah. he also has to help out dad or mom to take care of his brothers in such a way that when we even go out for a party or for an event, mm -hmm. even before I rush to look for where his brother is, he's already there bringing, bringing him back or taking him back. So sometimes you actually tell him, go and play with your friends. Yeah. So no, I, I I have to watch. I have to I have to keep watching, checking on on my brother. So he he's grown up. He he's growing up, knowing that he's this is his brother. This is the, the his brother's condition, and as Ooh. his younger brother, he also has a responsibility. Same as every other sibling, they they know that they should be each other's keeper. Those yeah. two, they are inseparable. Yeah. And yeah, and he he's he's also an autism and autism advocate. He actually calls himself an autism expert. So, oh. so, yeah. So last year we uh, he he did um autism awareness session at at his school mm -hmm. at the school assembly in front of the whole school. He presented how he takes care of his brother and. Mm -hmm. okay, so, I'm to you as a mom for whatever values you've instilled in him or you and the, your, your, and husband. Dad, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. your husband for whatever values you guys have been able to instill in him yeah. for him to be that protective so the way, yeah the way we we've made it the way we've made it in we've made it in such a way that um anyone who who, who lives with us whoever you are wants to live under this roof 
you have to be able to take care of each other you you, you have to be aware that there's someone here who has extra needs mm -hmm. and you cannot live in isolation yeah. when yeah. when he's there so at some point whether you like it or not if he likes you he will come to you and he will ask you to do something for him or to help you do something for him and and i and i usually say if you accept he, in order for you to accept me or to take me as i am you have to accept my child if not there's no me yeah. so yeah um, our babies are just a physical extension of our hearts so mm -hmm. well for yeah. a lot of us african mothers and so I, I i totally get that whether your child is not <coughs> normal to the eyes of the world or not that's your baby so yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then one of, one of the fears, and as well, sometimes when you see all this happening, and on the news about um, children or autistic individuals or people with learning disabilities being maltreated in 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 rest in rest in, in homes, you, you get scared. You you don't you seem not to trust anyone. You don't want to leave your child with anyone. And 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 again too. I usually say most parents, especially the moms who, who have uh, uh, autistic children or any child with a special need, we, sometimes we are very, I mean, you, or even too protective. You, we, we kind of act like this, like a hen that has just hatched so, and is protecting her, her, her cheeks. So you want to protect that child because you know the child is, is vulnerable. So you have to make sure that mm -hmm. he or she is safe before yeah so so before you leave your child to to for someone else to take care of that child if the person is not a family member or a very close family member or or the the, the other parent you really have to you really have to have trust in that person before you actually so if, if not that child with the person you go out wherever you are going to, you still not have a settled mind because you still have the tendency to call back home to find out how is he doing, what he yeah, so because it's a child that it's non-verbal. So he will not be able to tell you exactly what happened. And that's yeah. why in, 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 you see there's a lot of them, like you said, are always abused because they, they are they are taking advantage of what do you want us? who are your friends, who are in your community. Mm -hmm. How would you want us to react when we see you, especially with our biases and our fears? Because a lot of the times, and, and, and don't, I don't want you to blame those who may fear or who may act uncomfortable around you. What would you expect from us that could make your life as a mom with a child with a disability, let's call it disability, let's put it under the broad spectrum of disability. What would you, how would you want us, what can we do to make you feel comfortable or just feel, okay, it's a safe space? Okay, thanks for that. One of the things which has always killed me, not, not everyone does it, but it, it really annoys me. Like, you see a parent or a mom with a child, then you say hello to the mom and you don't care about the child that's sitting beside me. <laughs> I don't know if it, if it happens with every other, with every other parent with their children, but I've, I've noticed that qu quite a lot. Some people just assume that because he doesn't he doesn't talk or oh, they, they will not just notice. I mean, acknowledge the fact that my boy is there. So give him a give him a high five. Don't force hugs because he will not hug you if he doesn't want <laughs> he doesn't want to. But on a serious note, just come over and, and babysit. Let me let my husband and myself go out for but you know, maybe go for a movie night like the woman. <laughs> you remember we we came for your movie night. Yeah, we had yeah. to have someone. We had to have someone to to babysit. That's one of the things which they can do. Most important is to be able to accept my child the way he is, right? But yeah. before that acceptance come comes, or before us parents start blaming people that you've not accepted my child, it, that acceptance has to come from us the parents, yes. right? You accept your child, any other person will accept the child. Yes. And then 
at the same time, it's our responsibility as parents to let people know about at, uh, our children's difficulties. Because uh, at first, I used to just have this assumption that, okay, you would just see my child, you would just know, right? You would just know that there's a problem, but not everyone will just know. And then we'll, when they don't recognize your child or, or they don't treat you or he's approaching you, then they dodge as if it's contagious. Yeah. Then the parents start getting angry. I, I had been there. I was there. I was constantly frustrated and constantly giving those evil looks to people. But when I actually brought myself together and I actually understood, accepted that this is it, this is how everything is going to be and there's no going back. So every other thing, whether looks or whispers or gossip, because obviously people will say things. Anything that somebody says to me, you, you are ignorant is because you don't understand so which is one of the reasons i started my advocacy journey i started talking about about autism because it, it i discovered that it's the parents place now to give a voice to that autism to make people understand so if you the parent are comfortable talking about it other people will, will be comfortable okay. As well. Yes, talk about it. Another thing which you you can do as as my friend is do not isolate me. If you have an event, you have an occasion, involve me, the parent. When I say me, I mean both mom or, or the dad. Involve us. Yeah. With, with special needs or disabled children, involve us and let us be the ones to say, my hands are tight. I am too busy. I will not have time because m what I discovered at some point was, oh, Clan, no, no worry, uh, because your hand is overflow, your hand is overflow, so your hands are already too full. So yeah. I, I didn't just want to bother you. Let yeah. me be the one to give my excuses. Let me be the one to say, okay, I can't get involved because my hands are too full because I don't have the time. So please, it's very necessary for 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 friends families to involve us it's true that it's a challenge it's a struggle because taking care of one autistic child sometimes can feel like you're taking care of about five or ten children it's yeah. tiring it's exhausting so it is but we also want to be involved and if you are someone who if you're a parent you will absolutely loved their social life Yes. It affects your social life. Yeah. And even if you, you didn't love social life, but you, you still used to go out, at times you discover that even when you go out, you don't have the time to interact with, with people because you have eyes everywhere, all around you, your, your head, because you have to spot wherever he's going to. So somebody will not come and in, be initiating a good conversation with you and you are completely... Uh, uh, engulfed in, in the conversation and then you yeah point you, your point of attention will always be your child first mm -hmm. unfortunately some friends don't like it when you don't give them that enough attention i've always put my child first as far as any friend is is concerned so you can you can wait there is i mean what i think like uh, tessie says that's a very balanced honest and educative um, expression of what your need is as a mom with a child, even with a child with any disability. So I hope that we've all heard, we've, we've, we've heard it over. Oh, Rosha says, I really admire your courage, Clarice. I also have a son with autism and I am really uplifted by you today. And that is a See, Ro, like, Roger, you're talking to, 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 to Clarice and you're bringing tears to my eyes because that's all I want. If we have a conversation and one person is affected positively, we've done yeah. our job. And I'm just so grateful for that comment, Roger, and I thank you for that. Clarice, my final question to you tonight is, what would you say to a mother whose son or daughter has just been diagnosed with autism? Okay. Yeah, it's at that point, because before she's gone to that stage of that diagnosis, she's she's been grieving, right? Yes. Yeah, she's been wondering, what will I tell my friends? Yeah. 
what will people think right what will my family say then it, it at some point it even worsens the, the the situation if your immediate family does not support you if your family if some members of your family are accusing maybe your husband's family but i would tell you that every emotion that you you have go through those emotions because you have to grieve that child you thought you were going to have yeah. and be able to accept the one you have now remember guys yeah. any parent that has a child with a disability you grieve that child not because he's dead but because this is not the child you were expecting obviously every parent you 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 won't be pregnant then you're, you're saying that okay well, i'll have a child who is disabled unless they've already told you at the at your antenatal but the thing is once you have a child with a disability you have to grieve that child so which means even if you are denying you are at that denial stage this like this cannot be my child no this is not the child i wanted to me that is normal because that is a normal emotion yes. but but do not get stuck there you'll be angry you'll be angry with everyone with everybody even yourself including god you question god because you look into yourself and you say but god i lived all my life being straight being this but yeah because sometimes you you, you have to evaluate yourself and you look back then you're like but i know all these ladies i know all these girls who had these several abortions who did all sorts of things with their wounds you know and i didn't do any of them why should this happen to me then he, oh god if you really love me why would you let me yeah so so you go through that anger as well mm -hmm. then with what people say around you tend to be ashamed as well and when you start getting ashamed then you start drifting towards accepting that this right now something something has happened somewhere somebody has done something but i still say if you are angry make sure you go through that anger but do not get stuck there. You will reach a point where you begin. You start telling God that, God, see, eh, if you just make my child a eh, talk today, if you just make my child normal today, I will worship you for the rest of my life. I will praise you. That's still a normal emotion that we go through. Even mm -hmm. every other grief we go through, then at some point, because you've gone through all this, at some point you are hit with depression. That is still normal. And you have to accept that when you've reached that stage. At some point, depression is actually helping you, leading the way now to acceptance. I say no matter what emotion you go through as a parent whose child has been recently diagnosed, please look for ways to, to help you. There are therapies, there are people out there to help you don't bottle up because it will explode someday you know what happens when you 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 close the bottle of a coke mm -hmm. you shake it and then one someday you you open you know what happens it may happen like that but one good thing is that no matter what emotions you go through at some point you will settle you will accept because you know that this is my reality this is what I am going to face now for the rest of my life. How am I going to adjust my life now with, with, with this child who needs extra care, maybe who needs care all around the clock, who doesn't sleep well, who has the sleep disturbance, or mm -hmm. maybe uh, the, the child is autistic and then has been diagnosed with epilepsy. What, what, do, what do I do? Wow. So on top of that, there are other conditions that... that Yes, autism has brothers and sisters. It has co okay. and epilepsy is one of them. So once you, every parent should aim to reach that stage of acceptance. Please, people, when you haven't been in a situation, do not judge. Please. Yes, please. please. Do please. not judge because it's first of all hard on the parent on the mom, on the dad, because there are also the, the, the man's friends who are also making their own comments behind his back mm -hmm. about, about his child. So it's also difficult. Then it's difficult as well to, for the parents, the two parents, because 
at some point you you discover that your, your only medium of communication is the child yeah. what about the two of you as as spouses so i would say is try as hard as possible speak with people who already have uh, uh, parents who already have children who have, have been diagnosed with autism join support join support groups research about the condition yeah study does do more for that research the research comes in form for informal studying i did in, then you look you, you find out attend trainings for how to manage certain certain uh, uh certain behaviors in your child like the information i sent to you there's mm -hmm. a lot of training there, there are online trainings now which you can actually do get involved in every decision that's been made about your child even if it means if they give you an appointment at school or the hospital attend the appointment you can actually go with someone or going with, with for an appointment take a note Take notes, make notes, write questions before you go there. Yeah, basically educate yeah. at, at every level. Yeah, as parents, we are our children's first teachers. Yeah, and definitely. Especially with autism, we tend to understand our children more. Mm -hmm. And at times, and most often, we can actually educate. The, sometimes I usually joke that the only difference between uh, me and a mom and somebody who, who is qualified in most areas is just that qualification <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, one last thing what are some of the things the words that you don't want to hear from us like if like like you know like if somebody dies they'll come and tell you that god no uh, um tire hearts or those kind of things we say yeah. in when, when, when yeah what are some of those words that or phrases that should not be said what not to say to a special needs parent yeah please don't, don't worry god cannot give you what you cannot handle <laughs> i'm so guilty of that <laughs> That's what I'm well my sister <laughs> don't worry god cannot give you something which you cannot handle. please people please <laughs> please god helps us handle what he has given us yeah just imagine i'm going to use a very raw example here just imagine you you are sitting and seriously crying because you've lost a loved one and somebody comes to you and says don't worry god cannot give you what you cannot handle <laughs> really <laughs> so please if if and i know biblically some people can argue this but but i think it, it it's more soothing. It's more comforting to to say God. God will help you handle what He has given you. Don't mm -hmm. worry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so others will say, "What? How can you say he's autistic? He does not even look autistic. What is even that autism? It's just in it's just in your head. You're just exaggerating. This this child, he he can really do more. more. I mean, if you had been talking to him since when? Since he was a baby, he would have been talking very well now." Probably you were not even talking to him. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I, I know. I'm telling you something else for all of us in the audience, right? We are so guilty of these things. Yeah, but um, and we after, mean well, though. People mean well. People yes. mean well. They don't express what she yeah. That's just what I wanted to explain. After I worked on my mindset. You, you you make such a statement now i'll just laugh and i'll i'll just smile and i say oh come on it's better you put it this way but at first eh, i'll be like how dare you <laughs> <laughs> like i said the, the mother hen right she's yeah. like ready ready to pounce on you when you touch one of, one of her cheeks this yeah but i know people people mean well yes really and nobody will really be mean you do have the mean people who will say it behind your back that one would hang on their picking oh my god you don't start knowing yeah, that word <laughs> yes. um, when i just started my, my 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 autism advocacy here on facebook that was one of the one of the things i used to see in my video that gombe that chris thing that obanji 
that you guys keep calling that is somebody's child or somebody's husband somebody's wife please yeah, yeah. sometimes we 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 start accepting these children by changing the way we call them but yeah. In, in, in another way, because I actually asked in, in one of our groups from my village, Facebook, uh, how do you call autism in the dialect? So one guy put it there, and I, I mean, I read it. I said, but this is so disabling. He said, yes, in, in English, we try to get words which are somehow soothing, but in the dialect, some of those words, you have to use those words that sound really negative so that people should be able to understand. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, see, um, <laughs> I just want to read a bit of this comment. Tell me about it. That statement always pisses me off, but I guess people are just ignorant. Others will say, I don't mind. This is why people, they like to label our children. Uh, Puss Bawak says, but I think if someone tells you it does not look autistic, it's kind of a positive confession and un encouraging. No. <laughs> Well, the thing is, autism does not have a look. <laughs> yeah. yeah, autism does not have a look because it, it is a, it's an invisible. It's not a physical disability unless yeah. unless the autistic individual has other comorbidities. Yeah, like maybe cerebral palsy. Yeah, yeah. Or anyway, I'm, honestly, this has been a mind opening for me. This it has the conversation, the whole everything I've learned, the knowledge you've shared. I'm just so grateful. And see, like somebody put in the comment, God bless you. So many people have been telling you, God bless you, Clarice. Amen. God bless you, Ben. God really bless you, my dear, because <laughs> God don't help you. Yes, God has helped you. He's given yes. you the strength to be it's able that, to handle. It's that <laughs> To the message. <laughs> yes, sorry, Nami, I don't accept that all. But he's given you the strength to be able to handle this beautiful boy, and you're doing such an amazing job advocating for him and others like him. And I just want to say thank you. So, any last words before we wrap up? We're, yeah. Any last? I, words? Yeah. I I always like to say I struggled at at the beginning with with so many things, right? And then my mindset was not really quite open because um, coming to a new country, you still have to adapt to so many things, the culture mm -hmm. and everything. Then you are struck by a, a, a tragedy of this nature. Yeah. Yeah, at times you, you, you get stuck at some point, you shut down and you only focus. My only focus then was him, work, home. And so I, I know there may be parents who are going through that. At, at the moment, yeah, it's it's going to be a very difficult journey. But know that when God puts you in a situation, He doesn't leave you there. Oh. He doesn't leave you there because He He gives you the road map. He gives you the the sad nav actually mm -hmm. to follow, and that sad nav consists of um, patience, tolerance. He gives you the strength. He gives you the courage, and so many other the resilience, the grit love, to, love, to, to, to pull through. Because it's not by our might. We and I, I cannot sit today and and I boast that I did it all by by myself. There's someone up there. He he may have put me in this condition, but I know he didn't. He he hasn't left me there. And sometimes it takes a long time for us to discover how that road map is to discover how to uh, uh, follow that because you can still have a start nav in your car and you still drive into a river right <laughs> yes right? yes you, you, you can still have it and you drive and you drive into a river so mm -hmm. sometimes it, it takes a very long time for some individuals for me i think it took a long time but i think that was for a reason mm -hmm. yeah so it, it it may take a long time but make sure you 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 as a parent you fight for it as well because the, just look at the child that you have there mm -hmm. don't look at the child and think of a different child that you thought you were going to have that one you have there whether it's a boy or a girl is that is the child that you have yeah and no one else so celebrate 
their achievement even if it's just it's just him communicating to you that please making that sign please yeah. or thank you it's a it's a well done it's great job it's that's very good even if it's it's him going to the toilet on his own mind you one of the things which some people do not really want to talk about is some autistic individuals can be incontinent for a very long time so which which may be one of the reasons that some parents will not want to take their children out because their children may still need parts in continuing mm -hmm. parts at a later age that may be one of the one of the the reasons so you we 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 um, we appreciate every little milestone or so every achievement in our child that we encourage them in their difficulties but every child is a gift every child nobody is a gift from god nobody will see you, you can ask god for a child but you cannot tell god that okay give me the one that doesn't have a disability yeah. we we cannot decide we don't choose so when we have the ones that we have why don't we why don't we accept them every child has the right to life he has the right to be taken care of irrespective of their disability. Is the right, have the right to your love, my goodness. Clarice, yeah. see, I, I, can you see the comments? Because everyone yeah. is so, so <laughs> thankful. It was really enriching. And I really thank you for coming on the show today. For those who are joining now, you can watch. Uh, we're rounding up, but you this is going to be available on on the page, the Goretti Experience page, and also we upload it on the Goretti Experience YouTube page as well. Mm -hmm. So you can also watch it on that and share with your, I think that the conversation today has been so educational, so informational, so enriching, and such an eye opener for a lot of us that I would really appreciate if you could share this as much as you can. So Clarice, thank you so much, Mbeng. As others call you, I really appreciate this and thank you. I'm just gonna take you backstage while I say bye, but don't leave. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Wow. Guys, bless her indeed. Bless her. Thank you so much, Clarice. Thank you all so much for all your contributions. This, if if you read in the comments, take a minute and read in the comments, and there's just so much information in there that's going to be beneficial to all of us. This, this, my, my closing is to parents with disabilities, with children with disabilities, parents with children with disabilities. Be patient with us who don't know the right things to say when we get to you. Because a lot of the times we understand your struggle, we just don't know how best to verbalize it. And so be patient with us. And if at any time, please, educate us educate us so that we can take that education and pass it down to our children and pass it down round to the community so that in that way we lessen the stigma we lessen the stigmatization around disabilities and so that other parents who are suffering in silence can have just that one day or a breather from from all the talk and all their fears and all their insecurities around their children with disabilities. I just want to say thank you so much. The woman experience um, is every Wednesdays and Fridays. Like I said, just before uh, Clarice left, we upload on our YouTube page, the woman experience. I call on you to please, please, please like my page. Tell your friends to tell your friends to like the, the Goretti Experience page. And if you're on YouTube, please make sure you sub subscribe on the Goretti Experience page as well. On Friday, our guest is Dr. Raisa. And we're talking about something, again, that is very important, postpartum depression and, um, and childbirth. And she's a neonatologist here. I'm learning things every day. She's a neonatologist. Dr. Raisa Fobi from the US is joining us. And that is also going to be a wealth of information so please join us friday at 8 p.m and let's again reinforce awareness on all these things that we continue to these issues that we continue to keep hush hush it's time to bring them to the open and lessen their power thank you and have a wonderful evening i'll see you on friday thank you